Hi, I'm Robert with Applied Colors, and today we're going to re-dye the seat bolster using the Applied Colors AC1000 interior re-dye kit. I should let you know that we manually created this damage here, so it's not an ideal subject, but for the purposes of this video, uh, this will work out fine. The first step of any re-dye is to thoroughly clean the seat. I want to be sure that the entire seat is clean, even if I'm only working on this spot, because the overspray could land on any area of the seat and we also want to know the true color of the seat. I mean as it gets dirty uh, we can't actually get an accurate dye match until the whole seat is completely clean. So I'll sp spray the uh, the TriClean uh, prep cleaner solution liberally and follow up with a scuff pad and get into the contours of the seat so that it's thoroughly cleaned. And you have to be really disciplined about getting in every little tight spot of the seat to ensure that it's ready for the dye. The bolster has some, uh, some light cracks that we're going to have to fill first before we proceed to dye. We'll use a palette knife to spread a few thin layers of leather filler into these cracks. You want to be careful to keep it really thin and not have any high spots in your filler. You can even smooth them out with your finger. Using the heat gun, I'll cure these out for about 20 to 30 seconds at full, at full heat. Now I'm going to feel for any low spots in the repair area and I'll just apply a thin amount of leather filler to any spots that still have any slight cracking in them. And I'll repeat with the heat gun. Okay, now that the filler is all cured out, I want to make sure that there's no high spots, no low spots, no waviness in our filler. So I'll use some 600 grit sandpaper and really lightly sand this flat. Be gentle with the sandpaper. I generally like to only sand in one direction. And now we'll clean up our uh, repair area as we move on to the next step, which will be texturizing. And leather has a natural texture to it, so we don't want our repair area to be unnaturally smooth. So that's why we're going to uh, apply uh, some spray grain to the surface. This is a mini HVLP spray gun that you can buy online or at a hardware store uh, for less than $80. I'm going to calibrate it to about 35 PSI. So I'll pour about an ounce of our spray grain into our cup here. Be sure to cap our cup and we'll test our spray pattern on a sample piece of cardboard here. Yeah, everything looks pretty good. So using this as a shield, I'm going to texturize our repair area. Now I'll cure out the spray grain with the heat gun for about 20 seconds. And we'll pour out the excess spray grain back into its container. And we want to make sure that our cup uh, stays completely clean. So we're going to pour about half an ounce to an ounce of TriClean in here. Place the cap on. Give it a good shake. We'll spray some right through the nozzle. And we'll empty our TriClean into the into our trash. Check our spray again. And we have a clean gun. Now it's time to get our paint match. This factory color booklet is going to indicate which formula we're going to use based on the year, make, and model of the car. In this case, the seat came from a 1999 BMW 3 Series. And looking through the chart, I match up the year, make, and model to an appropriate formula. In this case, we're going to mix up the formula called parchment. And the formula is 0453. To get that formula for BMW parchment, I'll go into my actual formula booklet and find formula 0453. And in the booklet, it's going to indicate which of our dye colors we're going to use and in what quantities based on the unit of grams. Okay, our formula is going to 
call for 13.9 grams of white. So we'll turn on our scale and we'll add white until we reach 13.9 grams. Okay, it looks like I've over poured a little bit. It does happen and all we need to do is take a popsicle stick and remove a little bit of dye until we come back to our indicated amount. Okay, now we're going to add our next color which is going to be dark brown and we are going to add dye until we hit 17.4 grams. Okay, our next color is going to be yellow and we will add yellow until we've reached 18 grams. And finally we're going to add our clear base which gives our pigment the majority of its volume. In fact, we're going to add this until we reach 94 grams. And now we'll thoroughly stir up our mixture. Okay, before I apply the dye, I want to make sure that I've masked off anything that could be hit with overspray. Okay, I've added my dye to my cup. I'm going to check my spray pattern against my cardboard sample. It looks good, so I'm going to proceed to dyeing the seat very, very light coats with the heat gun in between coats. Where's my shit? Oh, here. You just let it roll. Okay, this took about 10 coats of, uh, of dye. Two coats at a time cured out with the heat gun in between for about 20 to 30 seconds. And this, uh, this seat's uh, completely dry. The customer can sit in the car. They can drive away uh, within maybe five minutes of finishing your repair. Within about a day, they can clean and condition this seat uh, just like the other seats in their car. We did this repair correctly and then we cleaned it, we scuffed it, we applied about 10 light coats of uh, some very high quality permanent dye. So you can expect this to last as long as the original finishing. So if it took seven years to create that damage that we saw uh, in the seat beforehand, I would expect this repair to last the same distance seven years based on that customer's use of their car. Now we want to clean up our gun by discarding our unused dye and you can certainly hold on to dye as long as you have a completely sealed cup. You can save dye if you see, you know, see the same colors repeatedly. Stop. And I'll wipe out the interior of the cup. To get any dye that clings to the walls in there. And I'll add a little bit of tri-clean into our cup. Cap it. Give it a good shake. Pour out my tri clean into my waste basket. Wipe out my cup and give it a couple of pulls of the trigger to empty out the inside of my gun. Now that it's all emptied out, I'm going to wipe off the tip to make sure that no dye accumulates there. I'll wipe up my cap. and disconnect my gun, it's clean and ready for its next use. A bolster repair like this will probably take about 25 minutes including cleanup. Uh, the materials that you'll use in total are probably going to be about uh, $5 on a retail basis. I would charge about $75 for this repair. And this is the same basic process whether it's leather, vinyl, or plastic. 
You're gonna clean it, you're gonna scuff it, fill it, get your color match, and re-dye it. And this really isn't very difficult because the hardest part of this is the color matching. And the factory booklet makes it extremely simple. You just match the year, make, and model of the car up to the formula in the booklet. I'd say that you could learn to do recoloring in about two to six hours. So what you'd want to do is get some parts from the junkyard, maybe a couple of seats and some door panels, and follow the instructions in the repair manual. It's extremely thorough. So practice, practice, practice on test panels. I think within two to six hours you're going to have the confidence to take this service to your customers.